Hello, dear friends. Today we continue to get acquainted with the diary of a German soldier. Remember to rate this video and also leave your opinion in the comments. And here we go. October 21st. We again suffer casualties. It continues like that until October 24th. Then the first company replaces us. The rotation takes place in the evening. We march at 2100 and reach our accommodations at 2 a.m. on October 25th. That was a pretty long way to go. We suffered casualties in the positions. We were happy that we finally lay down. We covered 12 kilometers. We had a rest in Clevici until November 1st. We had a bath, shaved, ate, and took a drink. We put our uniforms in order, relaxed our nerves. In addition, we were given our salaries. Then, at 1100, the newly formed platoon commanders, accompanied by Feldwebel Palkowitz, left again with the acting company commander to survey and occupy the positions. At 1200, the march of the company from Clevici. At 1430, we replaced the second company in its positions. The commander of the company was appointed Oberlieutenant Ringel. We marched 12 kilometers. We're at the former positions. Things are going on as usual. The Russians make themselves felt with pointless shooting. We go out for reconnaissance. Their dugouts are about 300 meters from us. Fusilier Strace is wounded. We gave them an excuse to do some shooting. The following days, 40 to 50 mines a day flew into my section. More and more every day. The night from November 6th to 7th is a full combat readiness. Day of the Russian Revolution. There's a Russian attack. By 2340, we give them a hard time and they fall back. From 3 to 4 a.m., we again are being covered with great fireworks. At 9.30, our reconnaissance, commanded by non-commissioned officer Fox, goes forward. They make their way up to the Russian trenches. The entire day is peaceful. The following days, there is heavy mortar fire. We build a new dugout for our platoon. On November 9th, a Russian defector showed up at our place. November 10th. There is heavy shelling from large caliber mortars. Sergeant Mount is wounded. He has six shrapnel fragments in the right side of his body. November 11th. We go on reconnaissance patrol. We put out the propaganda leaflets. Everything runs its course until November 17th. And then the 6th Company replaces us. We are in the dugouts for a rest. Our commander, Oberlieutenant Stille, is in the regiment again. He pays us a visit at our position. November 18th. The Russians break into the 11th Company's lines near a spruce wooded height. At this point, the 1st Platoon, along with the Company Command and Control Section, the Platoon Command and Control Section, and two other squads are in Klevici for sanitation. Goebbels Squad counterattacks. By 1200, we reach the battalion command post. However, our 2nd Platoon, together with Goebbels Squad, have already cleared everything. There and back is 20 kilometers. We return to our dugouts and never got through the disinfestation. November 21st. The winter warfare training is conducted by Oberlieutenant Stille in the village of Damashi. November 26th. We go to the village of Nikleditz for sanitation. At night, the Russians drop their bombs there, and the house next door to our accommodation place catches fire. Today, we covered 10 kilometers. November 28th. We move out to the dugouts of our battalion. We ride together with the 14th Company. Arrival is at 1700. We report to the commander. The ceremony of awarding the Iron Cross First Class occurs. December 1st. We will be replaced tomorrow. December 2nd. The 2nd Battalion of the 48th Regiment replaces us. At 7 o'clock, we march to Kurgan. There, we are treated with coffee. At 9 o'clock, we keep moving. Mamov China, Trasnaya Gorka, Piski, Ilaina, Gorka, Tyordova. Arrival is at 1500. This is the first time we have electric lighting. The following days are calm. We put our uniforms and weapons in order. Oberlieutenant Stelle gets the company again. On December 5th, Lieutenant General Zeidlitz Kurzbach called me into Lienya Gorka to award me the Iron Cross First Class. The frost is about 30 degrees. All the following days were frost and snowfalls. December 12th. The weather is great, both thaws, then frost, besides snowstorms. December 17th. The preparation for tomorrow's march is in progress. December 18th. At 8 o'clock, we marched to Krasnaya Gorka. We arrived at 1400 and stayed overnight. We covered 18 kilometers. December 19th. The platoon commanders are dispatched ahead. At 1100, we inspect the positions. The company comes up to 12 o'clock. At 1400, we arrive at Damashi, 
and have a briefing. The company reaches our new position at 1900. We replace the 6th Company of the 89th Infantry Regiment. The position is perfect. The Russians are about 100 meters away, right in front of us. The firing zone is mainly no more than 30 meters. The Russian mortar men are also around here. December 22nd. The Russians cause a mess, but they get a kick from us. We suffer no casualties. December 23rd. The Christmas preparations are going on. We decorate dugouts with everything we have. December 24th. The commander and the platoon officers go around the dugouts and arrange Christmas gatherings. It all goes very nicely. It's a memorable moment. The days of Christmas pass quietly. December 29th. There was some sort of variety today at least. I successfully fired one of their dugouts with an anti-tank gun. December 31st. The last day of the year we are again preoccupied. The Russians behave disturbingly. 1942. January 1st. What will the new year bring for us? Its first day is quietly coming to an end. The days that follow are also nothing in particular. January 8th. Since 9 a.m., we have been firing at two Russian dugouts with an anti-tank gun. And with considerable success. On the 13th shot, the gun's barrel got inflated, but the dugouts were destroyed. The Russian offensive, which had begun in the early morning, dragged on past noon. We have counted in front of our positions about seven corpses. The Russians behave pretty silly, in attempting to dig the approaches to our positions in daylight. At one section they succeeded in getting 40 meters closer, but then they all got shot down. January 9th. We are replaced by a tank destroyer company. At 2040, we moved out of our position, and by 2 a.m., we arrived at Krasnaya Gorka. The frost was absolutely insane. Minus 45 degrees Celsius. We got the first cases of frostbite on the march. Upon quartering, some soldiers were determined to have frostbite of the second degree. The foot literally froze to the boot. We marched 18 kilometers. January 10th. At 11 o'clock, the company was accommodated on the trucks. At 1300, we arrived at Bell, on the road between Demyansk and Molvatiti. Non-commissioned officer Freeze was sent to the hospital due to frostbite on his toes. There are no more acting non-commissioned officers left in my platoon. At 2000, we leave for Lanaya. We arrive at 2300 and settle down for the night. During the night, the commander gives the orders. January 13th gave us new surprises. The Russians are advancing from the front. My forward sentry at the machine gun point was shot. Fusilier Kaufman was killed and Sergeant Rhine was wounded. Since the first day, we have been actively sending out reconnaissance patrols in these positions. On January 13th, our patrol went forward and came across a unit of Russians, and they recognized each other just when there were only 10 meters between them. One of our men speaks Russian and even talked to these idiots. The four other men quickly ran away and returned safely to our men. One of them disappeared somewhere. The Russians were fooled. They even opened fire, but no luck. The lost soldier returned four hours later. At first he was unable to get through the Russian ranks and lay down in cover. Later he took up the trail of the Russians because they moved towards us. He managed to break away from them already on our height. January 14th. We put fire on the southern outskirts of the village to make our defensive position shorter. Before darkness fell, these ten huts could not burn down completely. Under the sound of crackling flames, the Russians at night succeed to get close to our position stealthily. But on the night of January 15th, we detect them by their sounds. The whole night we are being heavily shelled with mortars. Between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock a.m., the bombardment of our position becomes so intense that we have no time to count the bursts. And suddenly at 6 a.m., the mortar fire ceases abruptly. The sentry's nerves are tensed to the extreme. A red signal flare rises in front of my station, and to the right of us there is a green one. What is the meaning of these signals from the Russians? Our guards give the alert signal. Everybody rushes to their places. The Russians are already about 100 meters away from our positions, and they're coming closer and closer. They are losing many soldiers, but we have casualties too. Nobody is secure against death and war. The Russians are about only 30 meters away. There are only 25 of us. Although our artillery assists us, hand grenades are falling. It's a fight to the death. Both of my squad commanders are out of service due to bullet wounds in the arm. I appoint new ones. The state of affairs felt critical, but we withstood the six-hour battle. The Russians retreat to the section on our right. Now the second platoon is going to suffer. The Russians have pulled back. By 1400 it was clear that we had held the village. Now each man will get a Valenki. 
Perhaps it was the first time since the first successful breakthrough in the Marmalade Division area that Ivan realized that not everywhere in the villages there are bands of idiots like that hanging around the village. We do know that much is up to us. We will keep our position. We got two captured anti-tank guns, seven machine guns, a lot of mortars made of sapper shovels, and a bunch of rifles. In addition, we got Valenki, a bunch of them. There are probably about 300 dead men lying all around our village. A day later, we are given an anti-tank gun. That's one problem less, as it seemed the Russians suffered badly. But on January 19th in the evening, their reconnaissance patrol consisting of six men were here as usual. One of the machine gunners shot their commander and two other soldiers, and the rest of them fell back. Our patrol chases them and manages to kill another Russian and take his gun. The next morning, two more heroes are captured. The hut in which I live has already had three direct hits. To cut a long story short, we sit almost butt naked in the snow, and this in 30 and 40 degrees frost. We began to build dugouts. We live not badly in them. That is all for now. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and support the channel with subscription. Bye everyone, see you again.